jumping around in much the same way as the uh, professor has done, we come to Arctic sea ice extent. And I showed this graph, which, as you see, shows a sort of sine wave, a regular curve, with the ice reaching its maximum extent in the Arctic in around March, its minimum extent in September, and it fo forms an orderly curve of the comings and goings of sea ice extent. And all I do here is to produce the graph and I say Arctic sea ice extent is just fine, it's been steady for a decade. And this is what he says. All right, this is going to be a fun one, he says. Chris Monkton shows a graph taken from IARC and JAXA. This graph shows ice levels in the Arctic over a year-long period. What you see in the graph is there's a rise of ice in the winter in February and March, etc., etc., and a fall in the summer. And what Chris Monkton does, it's a bit of sleight of hand, he says. He says, look, this ice is going up and it's going down. There's no problem. In fact, his title says ice is fine. It's been steady for a decade. So let's just try investigating this further and see where the investigation leads us. Let's try something crazy. Let's write to the... IARC. I wrote to John Walsh, their chief scientist, and I've highlighted one key sentence of his reply. The reductions in Arctic sea ice provide a physical basis for extreme summer losses. So, first of all, let's ask the professor a few questions. Was the graph I showed an accurate representation of what the IARC and JAXA actually showed in their graph. Well, yes, it's their graph lifted straight off their website. So there can be no argument as to the fact that it was the accurate graph. And if the graph is accurate, doesn't it occur to the professor that after the extreme ice losses that persisted for six weeks either side of the summer sea ice minimum in 2007, there is a physical basis by means of direct measurement for the fact that in 2008 there was a partial recovery of the summer sea ice and in the fact that in 2009 there was an almost complete recovery to the decadal mean. Now, we go on. He says um, that I had not admitted that there had been a decline in Arctic sea ice, but I had shown on the very next slide, that's as far as he had to investigate to find out the truth. Uh, and you'll see that slide here. And look at what it says. Arctic summer sea ice area is just fine. It is recovering from a 30-year low in 2007. Now, the words 30-year low do seem to me to indicate fairly plainly that I am admitting that there has been a decline in Arctic sea ice and it reached a 30-year low in 2007. The words are there on the slide, and all you had to do was go to the next slide, and you would have found them. Uh, but what is interesting, of course, is that the sea ice has recovered quite a bit since then, and it is actually doing just fine at the moment. Where it will go in the future, who knows? Maybe Dr. Walsh is right in his prediction, for that is what it is, that because we've lost a certain amount of ice already, we could suddenly lose a lot of ice in the summer. He could be right, but it's only a prediction. What I did simply to show the actual data. Because if you stick to the actual data, you're likely not to go too far wrong. Whereas if you start getting into the prediction game, it's amazing how often you end up not getting it right. After all, who would have predicted, certainly none of the UN's models did, that we would have had no global warming since the mid-1990s? Yet that's the position. There's been a little, but it's not significant statistically. And nobody would have predicted that because they're all obsessed with the idea that CO2 has a, a big effect on temperature. And I think also an honest professor looking at this question of whether Arctic sea ice is a worry because of global warming would have looked at the sea ice that occurs somewhere else on the globe. And of course we remember that the professor finds it rather difficult to distinguish between the Arctic and the Antarctic. But we'll now go to the Antarctic and show my slide showing that the Antarctic sea ice extent has been on a steadily rising trend over the last 30 years, interestingly reaching its 30-year peak of maximum sea ice extent in October 2007, just three weeks 
after the Arctic sea ice minimum that we're being towed with a terrible trouble. Now, call me old-fashioned, but what I think is that the word global in the phrase global warming means what it says, global. And that if you have global warming, then what you would expect if that global warming was having a really dangerous effect is that that effect would be apparent at both poles in the sea ice extent. So we've had a sea ice extent decline in the Arctic over the last 30 years. It's rather leveled off in the last 10 years, except for that 2007 collapse. Um, but in the Antarctic, we've had a steady increase in sea ice extent, which more or less exactly matches the decrease in sea ice extent in the Arctic. And so if you take the global sea ice extent, and this is a graph which is kept by the University of Illinois, and we'll look at that now, on that graph, you will see it's rather like a heartbeat. It's like an electrocardiograph that you're looking at there. And if you had a heartbeat as healthy and as steady and as showing no decline as that for 30 years, the entire satellite record, then you would be regarded as a very healthy little planet. So there isn't any problem with sea ice extent. It's doing fine. Yes. There's been less of it in the Arctic, but there's been more of it in the Antarctic. And as we've seen earlier, the polar bears are very well adapted to surviving with very big changes in Arctic ice. They've survived it before. So we don't need to worry, even if the whole of the Arctic ice cap disappears, it won't add a single millimeter to sea level rise. And the polar bears will move back to the land margins from which they came in the first place, and the seals they feed on will do the same. So let's not worry so much about Arctic sea ice. He then shows this slide um, showing the 30-year loss of Arctic sea ice. But once again, you'll see a blank space on the right-hand side of his uh, page because, of course, he, I think, had hoped to put a graph of Antarctic sea ice. Trouble was, if he'd been honest enough to put that there, it would have showed an increase. And that was one thing that he was not going to do. So then he does another favorite technique. He writes to one of the known climate extremists in the scientific community. In this case, Mark Cerisi at uh, the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And he writes to him as follows. Chris Monkton is a climate skeptic, has been claiming there is no cause for concern with regard to recent ice loss in the Arctic. And here he says that all recent losses are temporary and solely caused by wind ocean fluctuations. And that's something Chris Monkton did claim. No, I didn't. What I claimed, what I said, didn't claim anything, I just said, was that the sea ice extent in the Arctic went to a 30-year low in 2007, and that it did so because of unusual warm currents of air and sea from the tropics, which came up through the Bering Gap and pushed the ice aside. And this is well established in a NASA paper of the following year, which studied this phenomenon and said, no, global warming doesn't have a whole lot to do with this. But I only talked of that particular episode as having been naturally caused. I didn't say that the warming that has occurred didn't cause the general decline in Arctic sea ice that there's been over the last 30 years. At no point did I say that. So what he's doing here is he's making up, and he knows he's making up, something that I didn't say because he's been studying this presentation for months. He can't get away, this professor, with saying he didn't know what I said. He makes up something I didn't say, which is plainly nonsensical. He puts that to somebody he knows will give him a point of view he wants to hear. That person then says, you know, Monkton is talking nonsense. That then gets put in this presentation. I get made to look a fool. And for good measure, Professor Abraham then adds how much he thinks I'm a fool because this is what Mark Sarisi is saying. And that is what we've seen time and again throughout this presentation. Mm -hmm.